It has been almost to the day, 15 years that we found ourselves in the middle of the great financial crisis from September 19th to October 13th, a 24 day period. We saw the S&P drop almost 35%. Question I want to answer tonight as we continue to see stocks sell off this September, why is it that stocks seem to always sell off in September and October? That's what we're going to answer tonight in tonight's market research video. Everyone, welcome to the MMT Macro Trader. We're going to go ahead and get right on into things. But before we do, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so you won't miss any updates going forward. If you find this video particularly helpful, give it a thumbs up on the way out. All right, as we get things started, it is a uh, it is a rough market right now. We continue to see stocks sell off for the month of September, really from that high at the beginning of September to where we are at now. We're down over 6%. Everything playing out as we expected. You know, from an NMT lens, right, when we view things through the foundation, the framework that is modern monetary theory, we know that when the government spends that adds net financial assets to the private sector. And we know when the government taxes more than it spends, that's removing net financial assets from the private sector. And that simple understanding can give you uh, some insights that for whatever reason, the majority of market participants just decide to overlook. And it is well known that there is seasonality in the market. You've heard the term sell in May and go away. We know that September and October oftentimes produce some of the worst returns in the markets. Question is, why is it? That's what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to build the case. We're going to go through some data and we're going to demonstrate why that MMT lens can really give you a leg up on the rest of the market to understand why that fiscal flow is so important. So let's go ahead, get right into it. What I want to pull up first is actually the seasonality here of the S&P returns. So what this is, is this took the returns going all the way back, the, the daily returns going all the way back to 1980 to today, took the average of each day's return, averaged those average together, uh, those averages together to come up with a consistent return that you would see in the S&P 500, again, taking the average return of each day, averaging them together, and then applying that to a single calendar year. And what you can see is this window that we are in right now is clearly the most volatile part of the year. You'll also see a bit of a pullback at the beginning of the year, a little sideways consolidation during the early summer months, uh, the pullback uh, following the sell in May and go away period. But then again, the big volatility kicks in as you hit the early fall months, which is exactly where we are at. We can also view this in a slightly different manner by taking a look at the average 10 day return of the S&P 500 from that same time period, 19, uh, from 1980 to the present. What you'll, see, what you'll see in this heat map is that we are very much in the time period. So look down here in September, we are very much in the time period where, again, some of the highest volatility, some of the lowest returns take place in the S&P 500. So why is that? Why was it that a few weeks ago I was tweeting out that I was going to be closing out my positions that I had, that I'm going to be in cash, that I'm going to be waiting out this period that I thought a a top would be in as we headed into this time period? Why is it that I felt pretty confident? Well, one, there's just a seasonality to this. But in and of itself, seasonality can be quite misleading. I didn't sell during June, but yet consistently during June we have a seasonality uh, where market uh, returns are relatively low. So why is that? It's because I understood what was going to happen from the fiscal spending side. In June, we didn't get a terribly large tax receipt. But in September, we got a strong tax receipt, a relatively large tax receipt, and we're going to anticipate a strong tax receipt in October. And I can demonstrate that visually by pulling up the same seasonality chart, but instead of looking at the S&P returns, we're going to look at the 10-day average of what I'm going to call the net fiscal liquidity. So this is that net fiscal flow to the private sector. Now, this only goes back to 2005 to present, but it's still, it still demonstrates the point that I'm trying to make here. And that is there are three big drains 
from a seasonality standpoint that occur. Obviously, there is the April tax train that takes place. There is also the June tax play uh, uh, tax train that takes place. This is usually coincides with that uh, with that kind of summer lull that you see in markets. And then the the next one, the one that we're in right now, is this September to October tax train. Now October is going to be a little bit different this year. There were some unpaid taxes from California. They were allowed to be deferred into middle in the middle of October. So we're going to see this year at least uh, slightly lower than normal spending aggregate uh, in uh, in October. Overall, though, it is a seasonal period where you do get markets to uh, yeah to, to to lack the necessary liquidity to push higher. Now, a good question comes up. Okay. Why don't we see a massive sell-off normally uh, occur in April? This is a question that will come up when this comes up. One, yeah, there are a lot of tax trains going on, but you also get a lot of tax returns taking place and tax refunds taking place at this time as well. Oftentimes, it's going to be the wealthier that have to actually pay net taxes, and then the bottom 50%, they end up actually getting refunds. So quite often, you'll see a uh, kind of this, it, obviously, at the aggregate level, more taxes are being paid out, but the damage is a little bit more subtle during tax season. That's not to say that there's definitely not a lull that takes place, but it does get smoothed out a little bit. Another thing that takes place in September that's not happening in April is you get a lot of corporate, uh, a lot of corporations that are also hitting the end of their fiscal year, and they're in a stock buyback or stock uh, buyback blackout period during this time frame as well. So there is multiple factors that are kind of coming together to make the September to October period a little more brittle for markets. And that is exactly what we are seeing and experiencing right now. So look, it's a pretty simple, basic idea. When the government spends, that adds net financial assets to the private sector. If the private sector decides to save those, there's a very strong tax advantage incentive to put those savings in stocks. If the private sector decides to spend that flow as it comes in, then that spending becomes revenue and profit for the person that is receiving it. So at the end of the day, that government, when the government spends, that becomes net financial assets for the private sector, and that boosts stock prices through that flow. It really is that simple, and you can see it demonstrated when you actually pull together the data. The last thing I want to point out tonight is what I showed is all upon the MMT Macro Trader GitHub. I'm going to link this below, but if you're into Python and you want to play around with this, I've gone, I've gone ahead and updated or uploaded the code to the MMT Macro Trader GitHub. What's also neat about this is you can customize it. The library that I use, Y Finance, is an API that hooks right into Yahoo Finance. So if there is a ticker symbol, as someone asked on Twitter, for example, the Australian Stock Exchange, if there's a ticker symbol that you're interested in, just grab the ticker symbol right off uh, Yahoo Finance and then plug it into the code and you can pull the seasonality uh, seasonality heat map for that ticker symbol and then also produce the, uh, the yearly distribution of that, the average yearly distribution of that for yourself for that ticker symbol or that index. So check that out if that is something that you are interested in. All right, that's all I got for tonight. But if you like what I'm doing here, you're an active trader, active investor, you wanna get access to updates like this with all the macro tools that I have built, all the data analysis, all the deep learning tools that I have built, and you want access to that, as well as the multiple updates each week, make sure you check me out over on my Patreon page. Patreon.com slash MMT Macro Trader is where you can find that. Other than that, that is all I have for tonight. So until next time, good trading, and we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.